Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, you know what they say? They say, you know, that we eat with our eyes. I guess so. <laughs> but then again, looks can be deceiving, right? right? Perfect example of that. Tonight's show. <laughs> You're not going to believe it. Yeah. He is taking a left turn heading west. We're going to take what you would usually think of as dessert and turn it into a first course. I know what you're saying. I've lost my mind. I know. <laughs> We're going to take these dessert concepts, if you will, preparations, techniques, and we're going to flop them over a little bit for first course. Doesn't that sound yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. Your friends are going to be amazed when you serve these great-looking dishes. I'm telling you right now. Mm. Talking about good-looking dishes. Talking about good-looking dishes. <laughs> Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band! <laughs> oh, yeah. How you doing, boys? All right, how you feel? All right, good. So he's taking these dessert, these dessert things and kind of twisting them up and... I first, love that. First course thing. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, All that's right. what we're going to do. We're having dessert first tonight, right here on Emerald Live! Yeah. Guys, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Guys, how you doing? See, these aren't the cheap seats. Well, we could go on and on and on about all of these sort of dessert things first, but you're not going to believe what we got in store for you. I'm going to show you how to take, you know what a profiterole is, right? If you don't, that's okay. Profiterole is the fancy name for cream puff or eclair. So you know what that is, right? Yeah. So we're going to take that idea, that technique, profiterole, usually stuffed with cream or a pastry cream, topped with chocolate or drizzled with whipped cream. What we're going to do is take it and turn it savory into a mini crawfish profiterole with a citrus butter sauce. You see where I'm going, huh? We're going to take the concept of dessert which is creme brulee, very, very popular right now. Except we're going to do a savory one that's going to be made with saffron and champagne. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah babe. Oh, yes. And then, you know the uh, great dessert, Italian dessert, cannolis? Don't you love them? Yeah. Not tonight. <laughs> no, we're going to take the concept of cannoli and we're going to stuff it with lobster and potato. Oh. And then we're going to do a lemon gastrique with that. Oh. A lemon gastrique. I love that name. Yep. <laughs> it's all in the name, Doc. Mm. Gastrique. Gastrique. Now, first, we're going to take the concept of sweet sorbets and uh, we're going to sort of cleanse the palate by doing this lemon pepper sorbet okay very very simple here's what we're going to do first thing we're going to take h2o that would be water and sugar you dissolve that in there like most sorbets that you would do and you're going to make a simple syrup okay simple syrup used for a lot of cocktails certainly the base for a lot of sorbets so this comes up to a simmer, we let the sugar dissolve, it gets happy, and then we let it cool, reduces a little bit, and now we have cool, simple syrup. Wow. 
he is on a roll. Sugar and water. And it took them all of six and a half minutes. Now, to that, what we're going to do is we're going to add lemon juice to that. The basis with the simple syrup of flavoring. It could be in a puree of raspberry or puree of blueberry. You with me? Okay. Whew, thank God. The innards of the lemon, when we squeezed it, lemon peel and then fresh ground black pepper. Oh yeah, babe. You know what it's good, would be good too? We could take a little splash of a little pepper vodka, but no, no I'm not gonna do that. So now we have our sorbet base. And whatever ice cream machine you have, based on the manufacturer's suggested time, we're gonna put ours in our machine, and we're gonna begin to start churning this. Woo! It worked. <laughs> we are really on a roll right now. Our suggested manufacturing uh, time, 20, 25 minutes, whether you got the old-fashioned hand crank with the ice or whatever, when it gets nice, get one of those clear containers and then you freeze it. This is one of those great things you can do way in advance. Like at the restaurant, I was talking to Karen Katz, our executive producer, and we was talking, reminiscing about uh, our Orlando restaurant at Emeralds, how we do like fennel sorbet. And we do these different sorbets to clean the palate as opposed to just dessert, okay? And that's what exactly this is right here. Really, really delicious. I simply before or during a big meal you just do a little scoop of this, a simple little garnish of lemon, and that's how simple it is. Lemon pepper sorbet, just like that, folks, okay? Keep it in this container. Here, try it. So you can tell all the other 80 million people watching right now. Good, huh? Spectacular. Isn't it delicious? Cleans the palate, little spice, little citrus. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Hey, when we come back, speaking about yum, 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 crawfish in profiterole. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. dessert first tonight. What's wrong? We always have said that jokingly, right? Oh, I'll have dessert first. <laughs> Got your wish, see? Little lemon pepper sorbet. Now we're going to go into uh, a classic preparation called profiteroles or cream puffs, okay? Don't have to, uh, this is a great thing to do with the kids too. Don't have to get all flustered with the name. Basically we have milk. Yeah. We bring this up to uh, almost a scalding point, and now what we're going to add in here is butter. Yeah. And we're going to melt the butter into the milk mixture. Also, we're going to take a little pinch of salt, add that to our flour, and some baking powder, which is going to make it poofy, you know. Other than that, that's really the ingredients, except for eggs, which eggs are also a natural leavening agent, which is also going to make it a bit poofy. You like that? Tasty. 
Now, once the butter melts, the technique of this is basically like making a roux. We're going to take this flour mixture, we're going to add it to the liquid mixture, it's going to get like a roux. And then we're just going to cook it a little bit. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. Now, whether you're going to do these as profiteroles, you're going to do them as cream puffs, you're going to do them as eclairs, however you're going to do them. One of the things about doing this savory, especially around party time and holiday time, you make these, you can make them kind of small like this. And then you can make all kinds of like different fillings. And whether you pipe it in or you cut them in half and stuff them, they make great little hors d'oeuvres for a little, little cocktail party. Now, once the butter gets all mixed in there, now comes the time where you take the flour mixture and we're going to add it in there. And right on the stove, we're going to mix that and it's going to all come together and it's going to, the heat is going to start making it form like a ball. Can you see that? And now what you got to do, like anything, like a roux, you got to cook that out a little bit. You got to cook it out a little bit and it'll have this little smell to it. You got to keep stirring it. And I hardly uh, ever do it without a wooden spoon. See how it's starting to come together. Now, once it comes together like that and you cook a bit of that flour, you don't want to scorch it. Then now what you do is the battle's about over. Okay, it comes together like that. Turn the heat off. Wow. Now, here's the thing. You're going to take that mixture and we're going to add it right inside of our Huh. I couldn't have done that again if I tried. That was like... That was like Houdini on profiteroles. So now that we get the mixture in there, now we turn the machine on, bring it up. Not too fast and we start adding one egg at a time. Generally takes about four, maybe five eggs, depending on size. You'll get this really deep, yellow, rich color. <laughs> so that's four. I think you get the point, right? <laughs> Five eggs later. Now, what you want to do, put it inside of a pastry bag, right warm like that. No tip. Let me just show you something. We're going to do these profiteroles about the size of a golf ball. Turn it like that, okay? Press it down. Now, if we were making an eclair, we would do it like this, you see? Depending on how big we want, and then drag it. But we're making a profiterole, so we're going to go, then we'll just press it like that so we don't have that thing. <laughs> yeah, you don't want no things like that. Get down there, baby. Work with me. So you with me so far? Oh, yeah. Okay, 350 degrees, folks. And uh, the key with profiteroles is that you got to kind of bake them, but you want to dry them out. You don't want to overcook them, but dry them out. About 25 minutes. And I'll show you in a second what this is going to look like. 350, ba 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 beep. Okay, here we go. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to stuff these profiteroles with once they come out of the oven as this first course. See, everything all right over there, Mom? Here, look. Give him some of those, babe. There you go, buddy. They're frozen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with... We're going to... Oh, give him his Oreos back, Mom. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little butter in here. And um, we could use shrimp. We could use chicken. We could use chicken and sausage. We could use lobster, okay? We're going to use crawfish. What we're going to do first is start with the trinity. Salt, bell pepper, 
little celery. I got to cook this for about six or eight minutes. I'm going to add a little salt, a little cayenne. During that time, a little garlic. Then I'm going to come and add a little flour in here. La, la, la. Two minutes with the flour. Bing, bang, boom. Add the milk. And when you come back, you'll see what it looks like. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. Lock it. here. Twisting it up a little bit tonight. Normally what you would serve last. First, I added the flour. You're my witness. I added the garlic first. Another minute, then I added the flour. Now what I'm going to do is add the milk. And this is going to make just sort of a very light sort of bechamel or cream sauce with trinity in it. But it's going to be a little bit thicker. Speaking about thicker, it'll never be at its full thickening until it comes to a boil like now. You see that? All right, now, crawfish, Louisiana crawfish tails. Going to add them in there. I'm going to add some pepper jack cheese. Oh, yeah, man. Green onions. Some parsley. Kick it up a notch with a little essence. Now, what I'm going to do is turn the heat off now, and I'm just going to fold in that bechamel to make this filling. You see that with the cheese? Oh, yeah, babe, huh? Put that on a bumper. It'll taste good. <laughs> now, while that's cooling just a little bit, Let's go to the sauce. We said this little herb butter sauce. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a little bit of shallots in here. Turn up the heat. And then with that, I'm going to add a little bit of white wine. I'm going to add some orange juice, some lemon juice. Now the key is, is to let this sort of evaporate at least by half. What happens when we do that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm is that the evaporation happens, concentration happens as it evaporates. So this is going to concentrate in flavor between the citrus, a little bit of the shallot. Now, what kind of herbs? Hey, what do you like? I happen to have a little bit of basil there. I've got some chives here. We can just kind of do them random like this. We don't have to kind of do them all fancy. All right, so while that's evaporating right now, about 25 minutes, and you can smell them. You can actually, if you're holding on to the oven like this, <laughs> you can actually feel the love right in the oven. Now, we used to have an oven cam but I think that Flay guy stole it. <laughs> so now, the biggest mistake that people make when they make these, don't go in there fooling around in the oven. Open and close, open and close. I mean, how would you feel if you got a draft? <laughs> it's the same thing about the profiteroles. Don't be giving them a draft. They get a draft, they get chilly, <laughs> they fall down. I'm not making this stuff up, trust me. So now we're gonna let this cool. Remember I showed you about when you let them cool, they should be kind of dry in the inside. They don't wanna be wet. 
See how these are not wet? They're not sheeny, okay? No problem. All right, look, this is reducing by halfway. I'm gonna add a little cream to this, mount it with a little butter. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around, we'll be right back. Talk to you. Amazing Cliff on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Right. How about Lewis on them horns, huh? Yeah. Sir Charles on bass. Yeah. Good buddy, Texas Teddy on drums. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Doc Gibbs in the house. Welcome back. If you just joined us, shame on you. I'm Emeril Lagasse. We're having a little dessert first tonight. Yes, indeed. And we're going to finish this one right now. So the filling gets cool. I split the profiteroles in half. Like I was telling you earlier, it makes a great, great hors d'oeuvre. Okay? Then you can just slide the top back on. You can fill them as much as you'd like. Show you that one again. Crawfish and cheese filling. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna boost this one up a bit here. <laughs> and uh, see, you know, great great hors d'oeuvre. Now we got them stuffed, room temperature. They're not gonna go anywhere. I promised that I would show you this butter sauce. The cream's reduced, and so we're gonna take a little bit of unsalted butter. Well, it is a butter sauce. <laughs> we're just gonna crumple it in small pieces like this. Yes, unsalted. It has to be unsalted. Because if it's salted butter, it just takes away from the whole thing you're trying to do. The thing with butter sauces, folks, are this. Once you start incorporating the butter like this, and the butter starts disappearing because it's incorporated, you can't bring it to a boil anymore. Okay? So what I do here now, right about at this stage, when the last piece of butter is done, re-season it with salt and pepper, turn the heat off. And this should be the very last thing. You can take to the cream like you did earlier, but that should be the last thing is adding the butter. I just put that butter sauce. I don't strain it out. You can strain it if you want. Then we'll put a few of those profiteroles just sort of on the tray. And uh, who would have thought, right? And then basically we'll just garnish it with some long chives like this. And there you have it, folks. There it is. You got a little profiterole action right there. <laughs> sort of like a custard. We uh, started doing these savory some time ago. And it's uh, creme brulee. But uh, done savory or don't have to be. This could kind of be, go either way. First thing we want to start with is some champagne. So um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, it's, champagne's really a wonderful uh, liqueur, wine, whatever to, uh, to cook with. Uh, I do a lot of savory dishes with this. It goes well with saffron, which is what we're going to use. Let's see how many we got here. One. I blew the lights out one time with this. <laughs> I think I was set up by Jay. So the key goes off, and the problem that people make is that they try to turn everything and, or they try to, like, knock it out. What you want to do is hold it in your hand. Just twist the bottom of the bottle. Let the cork do the work. Just twist the bottom of the bottle. Hang on to the cork. And uh, 
It shouldn't do that. That was poor. That was very poor. That was very, very poor. I'm going to be written up by the Champagne Police oh, now. Oh, man. Should make no noise. Shame on you. <laughs> hey, you got excited. All right, what we're going to do, a little bit of butter. We're going to add some shallots or some red onions, guys. And you want to cook those for about two, three minutes. Pinch of salt. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to add the champagne. And we're going to let the champagne start cooking down. Like I said, it goes great with vanilla champagne, these combinations. I do a lobster dish and a crawfish dish with champagne vanilla bean. Ah. Guess you had to been there. <laughs> After it reduces down like I have it now, you can see how the stage of this, right? Okay? I mean, it's really, really evaporated and concentrated the flavors. Next thing that I do now is I add tarragon. And a little bit goes a long way with tarragon, okay? So a little tarragon... And then the most expensive spice on the planet, saffron, okay? A lot, a little of this goes a long way too. So a little saffron, we're gonna get this wonderful, rich color by using it. And once we start fusing it now, what I've done on this side here is I've scald some cream, some whipping cream, heavy cream, whipping cream. And once we're gonna do that, we're gonna just add that scalded cream to the saffron mixture. And now, you'll see where something as white and pure as that begins to start turning when the saffron starts infusing. Not only this incredible flavor, but it's just going to give it this unbelievable color. Now, if we were doing this sweet, we wouldn't be using shallots, and we certainly would be using sugar. But the same method has to be applied where we got to cook this sort of like a pastry cream almost, okay? And that is by using egg, egg yolks. The problem is when people do this, the biggest mistake that they make, they don't temper it. They just take the cold egg yolks and put them inside of the hot liquid, and then it gets like all like, almost like scrambled eggs, okay? Same thing with pastry cream. So the thing that you got to do is you got to temper this so that they're like on the same page, you know? So we're gonna add a little bit of our mixture. And then you just kind of let them, see, you can't see it, but they're like getting in the groove now, <laughs> okay? And now they're happy. And so now we're gonna just sort of temper the egg yolks. And then we take the egg yolks and we just temper them right back inside of the big mixture. You see? Now, we're not cooking this like a pastry cream. If we were to keep cooking it, cooking it, cooking it, get thicker, thicker, thick, we don't want to make a pastry cream. We're making creme brulee. You with me so far? Yeah. All right. Now, what I do is I use, I don't have any fancy creme brulee things. I got these things. I use them for clams, scallops, oysters. I do all kinds of things. And hey, why not? creme brulee. There ain't no creme brulee police out there right now. <laughs> then you're going to see that I have this strainer as well. There's a reason for my madness. I used the pitcher. We already dirtied it. Might as well use it again. So we add the pitcher back. And then what I do, folks, is I come back with the pitcher and I fill up and strain. See the color that I was talking about? All right, so I do that, and then I go around, I do the other one. Okay, I think you get the point here. So I go and do all of them. Now, let me give you another tip. You got to bake this with water. Thing all right over there, Teddy? Everything's fine. Well, maybe one of the drum sets were on the loose. <laughs> so you fill them all up, folks. Let me give you another tip for me. And I just learned over the years. You uh, read a recipe and it says you got to bake it in a, in a water bath, okay? Well, this is, see what I have, a pan here? I don't have no fancy pan, which means that i got to add water to this now to what uh, comes up at least halfway up the sides, okay? But here's another mistake. People, they just take it, they fill it up with water now, and they're trying to get to the oven. <laughs> they get to the oven, and they got a mess on their hands. Everything's ruined. The water's in the creme brulee or the custard. 
the custard's in the water, the thing's upside down. <laughs> so what I do over the years, I take my teapot and I go to the oven and fill it with water and then I just slide it in. Are you with me? Yeah. Whew, thank God. <laughs> All right, so we're going to come back to that. Now, when these things bake 350, you don't want to rush them. They're going to bake about um, 45, 50 minutes. Then you got this custard. You got to let it set. You can't just take hot creme brulee, put sugar on it or whatever you're going to put on it and serve it because it'll just... <laughs> so it's best to do that pot, the baking pot of it, what we just did the day before. Let them cool, put them in the ice box. And that's what I did here. Now, when you're ready to serve this, the savory thing that I do, let me show you this. I still take some raw sugar to give it that top. What people also make a mistake doing, they add too much raw sugar. And then it doesn't turn into caramel. It turns into like burnt sugar. So you want to make sure, first of all, that you just sprinkle the top like this, okay? Save the rest, sprinkle it around. Then, what I do to serve this as a savory dish, almost like a custard. <laughs> oh yeah, babe. So we're gonna sort of just burn our sugar. So we get a nice crust. That's the whole thing about the top of a creme brulee is having that nice crust like this. And then I'm going to serve this as an elegant dinner party as a first course. And the best thing for me to do is you cook down and caramelize some onions. And you finish those onions with a little balsamic vinegar. And you stick that right on the top like this for your dinner party. OK? You garnish it with a little parsley like that. And a little essence like that. Bam! There you have it. A little savory. Hey, when we come back, guess what? Another notch! you didn't miss this unbelievable champagne and saffron creme brulee and we did this balsamic caramelized onions that just kind of go on there what'd you guys think Outstanding. pretty good here you go mom there you go babe all right enjoy it speaking about enjoy it let me tell you when i uh, did this dish and i do this a lot for using the concept, the classic concept of cannolis. But uh, instead of making a cannoli dough, which I've done many, many times, I take this cannoli. This is actually like, you know, a cannoli maker, you know, the tube that they make them. You grease them uh, with a little butter or oil. Instead of uh, cannoli dough, what I do, you can buy wonton skins that are either round or square that you can make into round. And basically what I do is with a little bit of water, I just sort of brush it like this. And, uh, and then I form over the cannoli mold, sort of roll it up like this. Can you see that, Buck? 
And then I just kind of, with that tucked under, I just sort of roll them, just like you would do with like a cannoli dough, making sure that they're, they're tight. Let me show you that again. So they're lightly, uh, these tubes are lightly buttered. One skin saves you a lot of time. Wet them. Then they go just like a cannoli. They go around like that, wrapped, keep them tight, just like such. Now, the cool thing about this is that you get them, put a little pot of oil on the stove, no more than halfway filled with oil, vegetable oil, about 360 degrees. And then what you can do is you fry them, which I'll show you in a second what happens. What happens is this. For this particular cannoli, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take mascarpone cheese. I'm going to take diced lobster meat. And some fresh parsley. Butter is optional, okay? Butter is optional, but you got to make sure if you're going to use butter that it's soft. If you put the hot butter in there, you're going to get these little specks, okay? So that's optional. And then basically what we'll do here is just to perk it up a little bit with flavor, we're going to uh, add a little bit of lemon juice, okay? A little lemon juice to this. Get the seeds out. Beautiful. Okay. Now let's check on our cannoli shells. They're doing really, really fine. We're going to uh, sort of fold this mascarpone with the lobster meat. This is actually going to be the filling for these cannolis. Okay? Now, something that really makes them really, really pop, okay? Gonna mix the lobster meat in there, a little salt, a little pepper. What makes these really, really pop is what's called a gastric. Have you ever heard that? Don't worry, it's nothing bad. You don't have to go see the doctor or anything. This gastric, a gastric is when you combine tautness or like vinegar, right, with sweet. So you have sort of a sweet and sour thing. This one that I'm doing, I'm taking champagne vinegar. I'm taking sugar. You got to dissolve that in there. And the juice of one lemon. We're going to bring this up to simmer. It starts to dissolve, and we kind of get this sweet and sour thing going on. You with me? All right, look, we're going to take these cannoli shells out right now. Look at how beautiful they look. Okay? Going to let them drain. Gingerly, I'm going to take them out, okay? They take about a minute or so, and then we're going to twist them just like the cannoli. We're going to take them out there, and we got these beautiful shelves that we're going to stuff with the lobster mascarpone. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what they look like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> We got this gas streak thing. It just keeps reducing down. Don't, like, jack it up. You know, that's, you got to use your knob every now and then. You know what I mean? <laughs> High, medium, turn it down, medium, low. It's a food of love thing. Relax. <laughs> then it gets nice and caramely and sticky and gooey. And use this in all kinds of, like, to accent salad dressings. Well, let me show you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our cannoli shell. We're going to take our lobster filling and we're going to stick it right in a pastry bag, and we're going to just make a cannoli like that. You see? So one for me. <laughs> then we got another one over here. We just kind of use the pastry bag, stuff it in there like that. You could use shrimp. You could use turkey. You could use chicken. Whatever. Okay? Another one for me. 
then you just do the same thing. And the great thing about it is that the shells you can do ahead of time. You can keep in one of those airtight, another one for me. <laughs> and uh, basically, you can keep it in an airtight container. Now, to finish it, if you're going to serve this as an hors d'oeuvre, just before they're going to go out, you pipe them in there. Your salad's in the refrigerator. And then this gastric thing, which just accents it, unbelievable. I just use a little fork like this, and I just kind of, you see, I just kind of do this. Not a lot. You don't want it to take over. You just kind of, you know, and it kind of kicks it with flavor because of the lemon. And this is a prime time when I would use something beautiful like some chervil like this, you know? Just like that, a little chervil. And, uh, hey, it's uh, that time of the year, so a little, you know, a little of that. Hey, what a way to, to start the meal, right? Hey, I want to thank you all for joining me, folks. I want to thank you at home. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.